Hello guys, out here on the field for you. I'm here to test a lot of antennas for you and also for me because I'm curious about it. I did a lot of preparation for this to make it right. I use a copter that can do return to home, which is kind of a minimum requirement for me, not to bail out too soon. So I can fly until the signal is too weak or even disconnects and then I will press return home. And I do this with different antennas and that way we should... Yeah, we also have GPS locks on the copter so we can measure quite exactly how far each of the flights has gotten. This is the funny looking SG325 and it has this little GPS and compass unit back there. By the way, if you have this power cable so close to the compass it will give you compass errors and it will ultimately crash. Maybe I do a separate video about this. I made this error yesterday. So the um, the battery cable should always be away from the compass as far as possible. And a lot of tasty antennas down there. Basically I will test stock versus true RC versus three and seven turn helicals and the maple wireless. And I will have a fixed waypoint quite far out there. This way I can uh, fly the same route each time and I hope I can give you nice results at the end of this video. I'm using the stock DJI antennas and I'm sure I will bail out. But yeah, I have my finger on the return to home switch. It still fights the wind but it's not as bad as last my last attempt. Uh oh. At the first, the first four M bits. And I'm flying over the woods. Uh. Ten. Three. Will I come all the way to the end of the woods? It's weird. Ten, five, three, seven. Ah, oh, shit. This is so scary. Well, they have more range than I thought they would have, to be honest. But now shit is getting real. Two, nine, three, two. Okay. GPS return home. That's when I wanted to bail out. And I know why. Ah, that's really. But it's still flyable with 0 0.8. And on the way back, it's so worse. Oh, this is so shitty. Now with the true RC stubbies off to the waypoint 2 and we have less wind now. At this time we might already compare the bit rate and I see a clear sign of more bit rate here than with the stock. DJI stubbies or whatever they are called. But it's way more flyable this way. Maybe to a point where I will not feel comfortable flying so far already. Okay, so really happy that this works this way. See a deck radiation of M bits, 9, 7, still totally flyable. Little reminder, I'm at 25 milliwatts and on purpose on 25 megabits. And now Shit hits the fan and I GPS, return, home. return home. Did you see how ugly the image was? Ultimately it looks like the true RCs don't have more range. But during their, the whole flight they have better bit rate. Of course the Excel nerd in me will compare this nicely for you. It's still shaky as shit. Three turn helicals, which are 
a good compromise between directionality and wide beam width so they can surf you around 180 degrees yeah let's say around 100 degrees very good and they should really get us far far to a point where i will not feel comfortable continuing my flight but we should see an advantage on those first on this first one or two kilometers and then i will return i will maybe fly as far as until i see a degradation in bitrate and I then i will put on the even more directional seven turn helicals i will not fly all the way over this large city to the end of the range of those antennas i just cannot but there is just totally 25 megabits all the time with the three turns now the first time on 23 yeah it's shaking a bit Eighteen. Maybe I have low. Maybe my crossfire will give up sooner than those antennas. Hey, but now. GPS return home. That was not as far as I would have thought. It's clearly further than those truasses, but not by far. Heading off in nice and calm air now with the seven turn helicals. And I'm I have a narrower beam width now, so that's a trade-off. But it's not so narrow. And you have just a ton of gain in this direction. I'm really curious how far I allow myself and the drone to fly. The waypoint is 3.2 kilometers and it's quite close to the city, so I will bail out sooner. But it's already a lot on um, 25 milliwatts. It's amazing. Okay, over the wood section. Well, I see the first 20 something radiation I'm also curious about my crossfire range <laughs> any house and 19 megabits 18. interesting that it's not as good here as I thought 10 8 4 what is up to 1 GPS I guess this is funny I will really have to check my antennas on the copter oh boy if they are loose I'm such an idiot so currently I see no advantage to the three turn which cannot be correct I checked those MMCX antenna connectors there's no problem there but man it could be such a nice flight today if I wasn't here for testing but I've also already flown here with my sector 5 in the beginning of the year so maybe you want to check out this flight or this video. Yes. And I'm really curious how accurate it flew the waypoint pass on each run. It should be fairly accurate, like a few meters away. But if it has to fight the wind, of course, not so much accuracy. But right now I have the true RC stubbies on top and the maple wireless patches on the bottom.
I think I still have a battery for switching this orientation with patches on top and stubbies on bottom. But now let's concentrate on how far it will work with those patches. I see some little degradation. Oh, now a huge degradation at once. But yeah, those are just interferences from L zone violations. 12, 14. <sighs> 10, 11. Oh, it's not bad, I can tell you. Would be cool if those little things now beat the seven turn helicopters. No. Degrades to. RF, signal no. GPS return home. Okay, so also my crossfire was at its limit. Maybe my waypoint is sucking. Maybe I'm also already behind the trees. Could that be? After analyzing the data, both in Excel and in Google Earth, I found one major flaw of my test was the altitude of the waypoint was at 50 meters and 50 meters is okay for like 500 meters of distance because you should keep 10% of your distance in height. But for like the 1.3 kilometers I got, I should have been uh, over 100 meters. I wasn't. So all of the antennas had more or less the same range between 1100 and 1300 meters. At 1300 meters, even the seven turns, uh, they, they even were worse than the three turns. So that's when the Fresnel zone hit, hit me. So that was a disadvantage, but it was the same disadvantage for all of the antennas. So the test is still kind of valid. Just note that the max range will be further, much further, I guess. I think with 25 milliwatts, I heard guys reaching, I heard guys reaching 1.7 kilometers until the stock DJI antennas failed. So we should go like two or three kilometers on 25 milliwatts with a decent directional antenna. Really curious how this turns out now. Patches on top versus patches on the bottom. Ages old discussion. Now we'll find out. Oh, it's what? 12 Mbits? Doesn't look good to me. My head orientation is good. Five, eight. I think that we have our answer, but I will fly until the 0.8 Mbits once again. But it's like drastically worth Okay, 5733. Three. We barely make it over the woods. GPS and I'm return. chickening out on the end of the wood. So I don't even need to take a look at the log files. Oh, and it's really bad. I can tell you that patches on the top are shit. So yes, patches belong on the bottom. And this way it makes more sense at all because the Omnis have better, a better vantage point up there. Ooh. This was a hard landing though. To be fair with the maple wireless antennas, I should state that there are right and left hand polarized antennas and their concept means you should use right and left hand antennas on your air unit as well. But I didn't have the time for this. So in my test I just used the left hand antennas in combination with the Starbies to kind of mimic the Axie HD. I will do a second test of the maple wireless alone, maybe compare them to the stock ones. So just be noted that those could perform better and there will be a separate video about them. Okay, flying my Emacs 
trying to fly this as consistent as I can. Fly in the height of the trees, holding my head still. Fly until the trees. This is all perfectly in front of myself. And just follow the tree line here. I fly in 25 Mbit mode with 25 milliwatts. Getting like only 10 here, which is good. Now I'm flying 45 degree in front of me. Bitrate is coming back. Yeah, so we will have to compare it this way. Now I'm 90 degree to myself. The bird tries to distract me. And I continue to the landing pad. And I will, I will just continue this with each of the antennas. True RC stubbies. Trying to get the same route, about the same speed. My head is oriented the same. Altitude should be the tree line. I really hope I had my last audio recording. If not, I will tell you again that I'm quite happy with how good the six inch copter flies in the wind. Oh, this five inch 6S copter. That's the way. We have way better bitrate boys and girls. So this is already, yeah. In my last test, I wasn't so sure, but here in this short test rounds, the true RCs are really performing awesome. So I'm approaching 90 degree from the side of the goggles. This is where the, the patches will not be so happy. Okay, landing approach. Ui. Okay, back with the killer combo with the three turn helical death rays, which have uh, almost 180 degree but I already told you this in the intro. Let's see if those actually never go below 25 Mbits. I'm violating Mr. Fresnel here a bit. Yeah, it's rock steady 25 all the way, all the time. I've been blown over here a bit more than the other flights. Yeah, very solid. Soon to be on the edge of their reception, like here. But to stay consistent, I have to turn around. Yeah, now it is 12 Mbits for very short, but that was because this tree was in the way. Yes, yes. Those are kind of my favorite directionals because they are most convenient, not too directional. I don't need crazy range. They can stay on there. They can be your everyday directional antennas. And those seven turn helicals, uh, I wouldn't want to use them on a daily basis, but, but as I said, if you are flying fixed wings and want to reach very far distances and are okay with the kind of narrow beam width, they are definitely a powerful option. Um, little tip, if you are into Excel and charts, I developed a method where you can convert those SRT files to comma-separated values, CSV files, 
And I also have an Excel macro that can import all the CSV files from one directory and import them into Excel and make charts. So if that's, yeah, it's kind of a stupid work to do. If you have a lot of testing, it pays off. So you can find those in the link of this video, of course. My recommendation or my, my new go-to's are the True Assist Abyss, just because they are so nice and small. If you want more and still kind of a nice wide open coverage, I like those really, really very much as well. They are easy to mount with those really rigid cables. If you really want to go the extreme, get the long range version, the seven turns. There are also five turn uh, helicals from, from Henrik. If you want something smaller or something to combine with stubbies, uh, check out the Maple Wireless. And I need to make this disclaimer. My testing today wasn't fully fair, but it was just time constraints. Those come in uh, a set of four patches, two left and two right polarized. And you're also supposed to have a left and a right polarized antenna on the copter. So it sends two different signals. They uh, get reflected. And in theory, this should give you a really, really nice benefit. I didn't test it this way. So it was an unfair comparison having four directionals here and only two directionals on the Maple Wireless tests. Sorry to you, um, Maple Wireless man. I don't remember your name, sorry. Um, I will do a full review or a better test of these as well. But it served as a, as a placeholder for the Axi HD pack, which I didn't get. Maybe I will get it somewhere. And it has a similar, similar gain than the Axi HD patches. In my last test, I saw though that the patches should be on the bottom and not on the top. So I think you would agree. Yeah, that's it from my field session here. Yeah, I'm sorry, I didn't do it all the right way by moving the goggles up there and have them fixed in place. I was just too nervous and I had to have them on my head the whole time. To stay in control. I hope this helped answer a few questions. Leave me comments, your experience with antennas, suggestions for further antenna tests. If you want to support such longer test videos with all the work that was behind the aisle, I had like two or three weeks now in preparation with the damn waypoint mission and just Share my video, uh, subscribe if you aren't, comment, leave me a thumbs up and use the bell. Or if you want to go the money way, use Patreon to show your appreciation. <laughs> really like to see it. And the funny thing is, I only have like a few patrons now, but it's almost as much money as, or as little money as, as YouTube gives me for my thousands of views. <laughs> so thanks to my Patreon supporters. I would turn off all the ads on YouTube if it wasn't for this damn algorithm. It kind of ranks you far behind if you don't do advertising. So I, at least I do not, and I know Bruce appreciates this, I do not use mid-rolls. Okay, way too much talking. See you next time. Bye for now. <laughs>